Welcome Climate Viewers, my name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's September 13th, 2018, and I wanted to do a quick update on uh, hurricane control and some little known, rarely talked about phenomena, NEXRAD radars and their interaction with hurricanes. Um, as some of you may have known, I used to be go by the handle Resonated, um, and before I told everybody my real name and address and all that stuff, um, I had a blog and worked pretty exclusively with Dutch Sense on uh, the topic of NEXRAD radars and how they affect storms. And I did a video back in the day called Geoengineering Frankenstorm about NEXRADs and some of the anomalies we saw, these NEXRAD radars going into unknown mode. Well, um, it just so happened that um, an individual who's brought it up recently um, was kind of asking a lot of questions about, uh, you know, can NEXRAD steer hurricanes? And I don't really have a definitive answer. But I do have something that you might find interesting. So let's jump right into that. So I'm over here on Climate Viewer 3D, and this is what I noticed today. And as you'll see, there's something kind of interesting going on here. So here's Hurricane Florence. Um, I currently have in my map list a whole lot of different layers up, next red Doppler radar stations. Track line forecast, center position forecast, the next red base rec reflectivity, that's the rainfall stuff you see here, and all the nuclear reactors of the world. Um, and what I noticed was that, yeah, this, this sucker comes in and it heads straight for station KLX in Wilmington, North Carolina, or LTX, excuse me. And then it goes directly over my house. Um, as you can see here, I live in Sumter, South Carolina. <laughs> so then it goes and makes a, a turn right here and, and heads up here to the next next red station, which is in Columbia. And that is next red station GSP. And then it makes a hard right. And then it heads up here between stations JKL and RLX and makes another right. And wouldn't you know it, it continues on up here, um, passing by next red station after next red station. So just a, just a very strong coincidence <laughs> um, and pretty interesting to, to note that, you know, it does make a direct line for it seems to make a direct line for these um, next red stations. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I just had to point it out. It struck me as odd. And as you can see right here is the Brunswick nuclear power plant. Um, it, for those who don't know, Duke Energy has shut that nuclear power plant down. Um, bravo to them. Normally I have to cover these sorts of things and um, show you know that these nuclear power plants are becoming underwater uh, during these events but luckily they've shut this one down um, using their brains there and uh, but it's got a couple more nuclear power plants it's going to blow by as you can see over here um, we have summer one and two and uh, the CTVR that's closed so the summer nuclear power plant and a couple more along the way but we're not expecting extremely high winds uh, luckily we're talking 40 knots 40 to 50 uh, mile an hour winds where i'm living currently so i shouldn't have to deal with too much um as we can see over here this is what um, florence currently looks like and you know it's on a path to go northwest, but then it's gonna suddenly turn and follow that next red station and then over my hometown to the next next red station. Um, this is it over on the global wind map. If you haven't seen that, it's at earth.nullschool.net. Um, but like I said, this is something I talked about back in the day. This is my old blog, and this is from April 11, 2012. The Doppler effect, our radars affecting the weather. 
Um, and the reason I, I, I got into this sort of thing um, is because at the time Dutch Sense was talking about something called harp rings and I wanted to research it all. And, you know, I found out a lot of things about NexRad Radar. And this actually has a very long history, as you can see here. This is May 1923. Rainmaking riddles solved. Attempt to produce heavy rainfall by spraying storm clouds with electrically charged sand. Um, popular science rainmaking tower, which uses a uh, electric ground wave and positive waves of the upper strata to control the weather. Um, Attempts to create artificial rain, Soviet ex experiments in weather control, electrical bombardments to control the weather. Um, this one right here talks about shooting 1200 volt electrical broadside into cumulus clouds to steer the weather. Uh, that's from uh, 1949. Planes control the weather. Oh, we don't want to get into that. That's a whole nother can of worms. Uh, <laughs> but uh, future weather warfare and, uh, you know, concepts of enhanced electrical oscillations in the Earth's atmosphere might be used to impair human brains as well as control lightning, influence, rainfall. Um, so electric weather modification is a thing and has been a thing that uh you know people have been pursuing for quite some time this again 1912 how to control the weather electric shocks for clouds so i really wanted to look into this um weather made to order 1914 electrical control um you know Precipitation of dew, water obtained from using electrical processes. This is 1916. So, you know, I've done a lot of research on weather modification as it pertains to electricity, and I really wanted to put this one to rest. So I spent years trying to search down how could a NEXRAD radar possibly control the weather? And I go through a lengthy article, you know, these are all the stations, not just NEXRAD, there's the terminal Doppler weather radars, joint surveillance system, integrated ocean observing system. These are all Doppler radars across America that I had mapped out back in 2012. Um, and you know, power sources, as you can see, they are generally 750 kilowatts. And what we're talking about is the WSR 88D. These are weather service radar 88D or NEXRAD radars. So I really wanted to, you know, break down the, the science behind it and find a cause. And the only thing that I could really find that was pretty definitive was found in something called the Supplemental Environmental Assessment of the effects of electromagnetic radiation from the WSR 88D radar. And these are next rad radars. So if you look in the environmental effects section, one thing really jumped off the page at me. And it's called searchlight mode. A searchlight mode will be used infrequently for maintenance and testing purposes only. During searchlight mode operation, the WSR 88D beam will be directed at a fixed location for up to five minutes at a time. Because the beam will be stationary, average power densities will be higher than during normal operation. Averaged over a six minute period, the maximum power density will be 3.85 milliwatts per centimeter square. Or, um, Averaged over a 30 minute period, the maximum power density will be 0.77 milliwatts per centimeter squared. If multiple five minute periods of searchlight mode operation were conducted during a 30 minute interval, the IEEE 1991 guideline for uncontrolled environments could be exceeded. To prevent violation of the guideline, each time the searchlight mode is to be used, safety measures will be followed to make significant impacts very unlikely. However, on, on here, you know, looking at the next rad radar, quite frequently we will see what's called searchlight mode, where you'll see a single pencil beam 
um, you know, coming out of a radar. I have several examples of those images on here um, where, you know, it just shows a single beam coming out. Let me find one real quick. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Very long article. Um, and I go through a lot of the anomalous stuff that happens, but there's one right there. This is an X-Rad in searchlight mode. And as you can see, it's not spinning. It's got a single fixed location. And that's what they're talking about, that it could heat up the atmosphere in that location if used for more than five minutes. We've seen multiple times where Nexrads have been literally in a fixed location for an entire day. So just pointing that out for you, this is what a pencil beam looks like. This is what it looks like when it's in searchlight mode, as you can see here. Um, you know, they call them sunbursts sometimes. Um, there's a, out of Florida, multiple, you know, just straight beams coming out of these next rad radars. So, you know, I find it ironic, a little bit coincidental that, you know, these, this does seem to, it's going, I mean, directly over this one right here. And this has been this, this station in particular, LTX, uh, we were, you know, talking about it during the Frankenstorm, Hurricane Sandy. It was in unknown mode for quite a while. Large bursts of bright colors coming off of the level three data coming from the next red. And then it's gonna come up here, make a turn at Columbia, make a turn, and you, you can see. Now, is it just coincidence? Because if you throw a stick in the woods, you're probably gonna get hit in next rad radar. I don't know, you tell me. Um, but you know, we do have several other, um, types of, uh, let's see right here. We'll go to atmospheric sensors and I'll show you all of the other ones. Let me turn on the terminal Doppler radar, radar, where are they at? TDWR right here. And, uh, the IOS are here. And now we are looking at all of the radars, um, Doppler radars in America. And as we can see, there's also a joint surveillance system radar right there next to the Brunswick nuclear power plant. Um, any other ones? Not really. So just a coincidence, wanted to point that out, but whether, but hurricane modification is a real thing in addition to electrical, um, weather modification. And I wanted to point this one out for you. This is from 2013. Hurricane hacking, the Department of Homeland Security enters the weather modification business. Now in 2008, I'm gonna skip past all of this timeline stuff at the top. At the David Skaggs Research Center in Boulder, Colorado, the Department of Homeland Security had a hurricane modification workshop. And as you can see right here, here is the photo of that, um, you know, presentation they did. And interestingly enough, in their, you know, examples of what they wanted to do was limited scale field tests and in there, ion generators. So even at the Department of Homeland Security, um, this was brought about because of Katrina. The DHS said that they wanted to prevent a, you know, another Katrina because of the billions of dollars of damage it, you know, caused. And they said that they wanted to get with scientists and figure out ways to either weaken the storms or, you know, change the direction of the storms. Salt seeding tests, carbon black aerosol or carbon black dust. Many of you who are familiar with my Climate Viewer channel have heard this many times. Carbon black dust is soot. It is a form of soot. Um, it comes from airplanes. They drop it from C-130s. Um, got a great infographic on that below. Upper ocean cooling, um, like the Salter sink. Um, just regular seating and then mono layer films. That's like putting oil on the surface of the ocean. It's called um, hurricane emasculation. Um, it's to shut off the water vapor going into the hurricane. So literally coating the surface of the ocean in oil. They've proposed that since back in 1965. 
But if you scroll through this, you'll see that Mosh Alamaro from MIT, he, um, he specifically talked about the carbon black dust idea. And you can see it right here. How to halt a hurricane, fleet of transport aircraft flying 50,000 feet, drop soot in the path of the targeted hurricane. The soot cloud is um, heated by the sun. Soot is warmed by the sun, heating cool air around it at the very top of the hurricane. This reduces the flows of air within the hurricane and slows it down. As everybody's noted, uh, Hurricane Florence is slowing down and going very slowly. And that in, ten, you know, in turn modifies the track of the storm. Depending on where the soot is dropped, the now weakened hurricane will change course. And that is what um, Mosh Alamaro from MIT presented at the Department of Homeland Security thing. Carbon black uh, aerosol seeding. This presentation focused on using carbon black aerosol to selectively heat parts of the atmosphere by dispersion of CBA above a hurricane. Um, and I won't go through this whole article. The links will be in the details. And hurricane modification by seeding clouds with CCN for suppressing warm rain, Dr. Daniel Rosenfeld. I actually interviewed him at the weather modification conference back in January. You can watch that video on climateviewer.com. Um, hurricane emasculation, ocean surface cooling, uh, with things like the, you know, silver lining boats. Um, let's see if they got a clip of it in here. No. No, there's his 3D model of what his boat would look like. Um, but these are the, the silver lining boats or uh, what's called marine cloud brightening project. They're also doubling as hurricane control um, by salt spraying. So there you go. Um, many other things in here, reducing hurricane intensity with arrays of wave driven upwelling pumps. Uh, there is Stephen, Dr. Stephen Salter, also part of the Silver Lining Project, the Marine Cloud Brightening Project, has his own Salter sink, which is a tube. And this tube would basically, you know, suck cold water from the bottom of the ocean, transfer the heat down to the bottom, as you can see here. Um, and that would cool the surface of the ocean, hopefully shutting off the hurricane and that they would put literally hundreds of thousands of these out in the ocean uh, pretty crazy idea but nonetheless the review of two hurricane modification schemes by dr mosh alamaro he's the um guy who's big on using soot um and you know the list goes on and on anyway that's the department of homeland security and this was written in 2013. The actual meeting was in 2008. So big, you know, big, big article right here. I suggest you read through it. How um, Bill Gates is involved in this. They actually have a patent for it. Water alteration structure and system for having heat transfer conduit. William Gates III is Bill Gates. Um, Roderick Hyde, Nathan Mervhold, the patent troll, John Latham, Stephen Salter, um, Lowell Wood Jr., and Ken Caldera. All on the NL Invention Science Fund 1 LLC, um, which is part of Intellectual Ventures, which is, you know, Bill Gates trying to steer hurricanes. And there were congressional hearings. Um, weathering the storm, the need for a national hurricane initiative, 2009. Um, also in 2009, NOAA says no to Department of Homeland Security hurricane modifications. Here's the actual letter. But they went ahead and had the Hurricane Aerosol Microphysics Program, HAMP, and the Genesis and Rapid Intensification Processes um, right there. And I just recently saw an article on some prominent website where somebody literally ripped this entire article off without one bit of credit. But regardless, this is the original source of it. I hope that you guys will read it. It'll blow your mind. It is straight from the Department of Homeland Security. You can see the original file, uh, DocX there. And to go with that, um, another one, this is from 2017, the full history of hurricane modification, 1947 to present. 
Project Cirrus, Project Scud, Project Storm Fury, and the Department of Homeland Security Modification Workshop 2008. If you guys want to know the full history of whether um, people trying to screw with hurricanes, dig right in. Um, also, this was the Trumpocalypse, where I discussed how we had a 10 year, um, you know, stop to major hurricanes hitting America. And then basically, Trump came into office, said, screw COP21, the, you know, global warming pact. And then magically, we started getting hit with major hurricanes again. So, was it that 2008 was also the year that Obama came into office? was the same year they had a hurricane modification workshop at the Department of Homeland Security. Trump gets into office, Obama's now gone, and magically all of the hurricanes start coming back. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. You tell me. Watch the video. I think it'll be very shocking to you to say the least. And a whole bunch of um, you know, things about that, like how Hillary Clinton and her super PAC support geoengineering and had Hillary made it to office John Podesta and his Energy Future Coalition Steering Committee would be legalizing geoengineering as we speak. So all of this is coincidental. Please check out the hurricane modification section on um, climateviewer.com. You can find that under archives hurricane modification link will be in the details. Um, but there are other articles, Hurricane Harvey and Cloud Seeding Explained, Is Homeland Security Steering Hurricane Matthew, The History of Cloud Seeding from Pluviculture to Hurricane Hacking, um, Hurricane Hacking Battling the Big Ones with Project Storm Fury, and of course the big one, the Department of Homeland Security, enters the weather modification business. So all of, a lot of this can be found over on weathermodificationhistory.com. And, of course, you can track all of this live with, uh, you know, uh, Climate Viewer 3D. If you guys are worried about flooding, come over here to the alerts and weather section. Click on rain and snow. Scroll down till you see river flood levels. It's a very large map. That's why it's in red. Give it a second to load up. And I'm going to do that because I'm also broadcasting live over my VPN. And what we can see now is what the current river flood levels are. And luckily, we don't see too much flooding so far. Uh, what do we got here? We've got uh, Trent River is currently flooding. But it doesn't look like there's a lot of flooding going on so far. Uh, red is obviously flooding. It says major flood stage 6 feet. Moderate flood stage 4 feet, current value 4.23 feet. So it's at a moderate flood stage. Um, and you can see each of these here. Uh, major flood stage 8 feet, currently at 8.73 feet. Um, and you know, you can control all of this by, you know, making it partially visible, sort of things like that. Um, and then scroll in there and actually take a look at where that's at. Um, but yeah, this is a great way to monitor all this stuff same time. Climateviewer.org is free of charge. So is uh, Weather Modification History and Climateviewer.com. I do hope that you guys will continue to support my work. You can do that by giving a monthly donation on Patreon or a one-time donation on PayPal. Um, I always appreciate it. It helps um, me keep the, you know, paying the bills around here. But all of this information is uh, free of charge. The only thing that I ask is that if you're going to share this information, that you follow the Creative Commons policy, which states you are free to share this, adapt it, remix it, as long as you give attribution, meaning just give a link back to where you got the article from or any of the images, and you're free to use these in your own videos, your own articles. Um, and, uh, you know, let me answer some of these questions over here in chat. Is there, what about possibly doing damage to nuclear power plants? That's usually what I end up following when I'm checking up on these hurricanes. Um, I use the river flood levels and the nuclear power plant maps to tell, you know, how many of these nuclear power plants are going to end up underwater. 
we all know what happened at Fukushima whenever that ended up underwater and currently it doesn't look like any are really in danger um, I'm only forecast to get like five to ten inches worth of rain at the very most uh, weather underground says four inches of rain so and I live right here smack dab in the middle, middle of uh, South Carolina I'm right here in Sumter South Carolina and uh, we're not looking to have too much trouble so I'm I'm hoping that you know it won't be a big deal let's just put it that way um, if you want to flip to the satellite you can do that here or pick a different one but you know that's this is my hometown of Sumter and as you can see the eye of the storm is passing directly over it now let me go over here um, the eye will be passing directly over us but we're not expecting to see anything super major uh, luckily for us but you know keep an eye on everything that's why I built climateviewer.org is so that you can stay abreast of all this information in real time um, anything that's in the live sections at the top here uh, the first three are live uh, alerts and weather NASA Gibbs satellites and other satellites all of this information is in real time um, so you can actually you know see what the heck is going on uh, this is the image from yesterday of the saddle of the hurricane um give it a shot man it's pretty easy to use i've got a new um little uh welcomer when you get there when you open up the website the tutorial video will be there um instructions latest updates I'm going to be adding new maps. They will be coming right here in this section. So as I add new maps, they'll show up there. And to play the video, you just click the button right there and it'll automatically start playing. And this is a very long tutorial. Um, it's an hour long. I'm going to make a five minute uh, version of the tutorial to teach everybody how to use this. But it's self explanatory. When you get here, follow the flashing lights. This one's flashing. Maybe I want to click on that. Go to add maps. Maybe I want to click on that. It'll bring up all of the map layers, 10 most radioactive places on Earth. Hmm, that sounds fun. I'm going to click it. Um, and it'll load it up and put it on the map. So there you go like that. That's how it works. Um, map my Marker icons here. Uh, go back to add maps. Uh, pollution and privacy. Atmospheric sensors. That's where the harp is. And the ULF, ELF, VLF ionospheric heaters from around the world um, things like that hit close and then oh there's another flashing light right there uh, maybe that's a raging clue if I click that flashing light it resets it and puts it back over here as just a mapless button so that gets it out of your way three clicks and you're on your way very easy to use there is also a mobile version of the map here under full screen maps um, this is a flat map if you are unable to use climate viewer 3d try out the mobile map it is much faster especially on phones if you don't have 3d support it'll work like a charm does exact same thing the other one does um, you know click 10 most radioactive places and bam there they are all in, all on the world uh, click on one of the locations it pops up on the sidebar tells you all about it so that's how you do it I hope you guys will have fun with Climate Viewer 3D. Um, use it to track the hurricane. All of that is under alerts and weather, hurricanes and tropical storms. Uh, what I had up was track line forecasts and center position. But you can turn all these on. Um, I'm turning all these on except for the GDAX one for right now. Just to show you what it looks like. And then you can come in and say cone of uncertainty. Make it you know transparent same thing with the wind swath make it transparent see through it follow it um very easy to use new and improved hope you guys love it hope you guys will donate um keep me going and uh please share this information this video um thank you all for watching um hurricane modification is always going to be a thing um it, I found it kind of interesting that it looked, seemed to be following the next rad radars. You let me know in the comments what you think. Um, coincidence or control? 
Uh, I seem to lean, lean towards, well, I'm not going to give my opinion on that. You guys tell me what you think. I just, I saw a coincidence in a line. i um, done a lot of research about this in the past and I'm still undecisive on uh, whether a 30 megahertz, you know, frequency at 750,000 watts can control something as powerful as a hurricane. But we don't know what all's going on. We don't get to see the big picture. And if C-130s were dumping soot into um, the hurricane, we certainly wouldn't know. They do talk about the Hurricane Hunter flights from the Air Force circling in and out of the hurricane. Uh, we have no idea what they're up to. Classified is classified. But regardless, um, all the evidence is in that the government, especially the Department of Homeland Security, is certainly involved in hurricane modification. Um, that, you know, is what goes beyond a shadow of a doubt, and that hurricane modification is a real thing. So, taking all things into account, I wanted to give you guys a report before uh, the hurricane hits us. It's going to start, uh, the winds are going to start picking up tomorrow. I'm going to see it over my house Saturday, and by Sunday it should be out of the way. So, um, keep us in your prayers, uh, continue to tune in to climateviewer.com, share this video and love you mean it. Um, with information comes power and with power comes great responsibility. So I ask that you use this information that I'm providing to you today to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.